Hey, YouTubers. I wanted to talk to you about why the American church is so sleepy and powerless. Uh, and I have a testimony that backs up what I'm saying here. The reason that I believe the American church uh, has really failed their mission is because they don't use the power of Jesus that they have available to them. Uh, Jesus said in John 14, 12, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. A lot of times you'll find that in a church people will, and I'll explain this in a minute, but people will you know, pray for healing, ask for healing, uh, and many times they won't receive it. And a lot of times, you know, they'll say, oh, well, you know, it isn't God's time to heal you, or it's not His will to heal you right now. And uh, you'll find that uh, that's not really true. Jesus wants you to be healed. Uh, now, this is a verse I've covered before, but in Mark 16, uh, verse 15, it starts, Go into, uh, this is Jesus speaking here, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly it will by no means hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, I'm going to share a link below uh, to two individuals. One, his name is Carl Henderson, and he's a missionary in the Philippines. And uh, the other is William Lau, who teaches something called the Elijah Challenge. And what they do is they go into, uh, you know, missionary areas. Uh, you know, they preach the gospel. But here's the thing. These guys don't just go and preach the gospel and just, you know, preach the word. But they display the power that is in the name of Jesus by commanding healing. Uh, you know, if you have a crowd of people and you bring up somebody that's blind, and you command healing, and that person receives sight in front of all those people, what's that going to do? That's going to show the healing power of Jesus' name uh, simply through that miracle, the same way that they did in the Gospels and in the book of Acts. When Paul was going on his uh, missions, I guess you would call it, um, here's something that he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellent of, excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in, weak, in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Uh, the entire New Testament, uh, especially Acts, uh, and many instances that Paul addresses, he didn't, he didn't bring people into Christianity simply through preaching or simply through you know persuasive words, as he said, but by the power of God. Now, there's something, you know, the reason the church is not accomplishing their mission and not bringing people in is because they're not using this power. We have a certain power that, we're, you know, is delegated to us. You know, Jesus is the five-star general in the army, and you and I are sergeants, privates, soldiers, whatever, and he has given you the authority. He's given you the key, the keys to the kingdom. To said that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And the best example that I can give you of this is the apostles. Um, before G When Jesus sent them out, they had, he gave them the authority to heal in Jesus' name. And if you look at every instance that they uh, healed someone, they didn't pray for healing, they commanded healing. Uh, you know, instead of saying, Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you uh, give this man the ability to walk and uh, that you restore his legs and all this. No, what they said was, Get up, take your mat, and go home. I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, uh, stretch out your hand and, you know, be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your sight in the name of Jesus. They commanded healing. They didn't pray for it. And we are given that same authority. In Acts 3, 6, Peter said, uh, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he did. Uh, let's see. In 
Acts 9, 34, Peter said, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. And then he rose immediately. In Acts 9, 40, Peter was brought to a woman who had died. And he simply said to her, Tabitha, arise. And she was raised from the dead. Because Proverbs 18.21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So simply by speaking, uh, you have power over life and death. I mean, Peter said, arise. Uh, Jesus said, uh, Lazarus, come forth. I mean, simply spoken words. That's the authority that we are given. So with that said, I want to tell you about a testimony of something that just happened to me in the past week. Uh, every week I drive to Atlanta, and uh, there's a guy that unloads my truck every morning that I get there to Atlanta. And uh, over the course of maybe a month or two, I've been witnessing to him. And, you know, I've been telling him about all the prophecy that's happening in the world. Uh, I've told him things like, you know, watch Obama's speech. You know, if he talks about dividing Israel, I guarantee you that... Uh, something bad's going to happen in America. And right after he had that speech, you know, the Joplin, Missouri tornadoes happened. So, you know, uh, the Lord's been getting this guy's attention through my witnessing. And the past couple times that I saw him, he has had a cold. And, uh, you know, I was kind of thinking on it. I was like, well, Lord, you know, I know that uh, I can command healing the same way that you taught these other people, but I need to step out in faith and do it. So last Thursday, uh, I was talking to him, and he still had that cold, and I was like, hey, uh, you believe God can heal you? He said, yeah. I go, well, what if I told you that God could use me to heal you? He said, all right, I'm listening. So I got down out of my truck, and I laid my hand on his forehead, and I didn't pray for healing. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this cold to leave your sinuses, your tonsils, your throat, your nose. I command it to leave your whole body, to dry up. And I command you to be healed by the authority given to me in the name of Jesus Christ. And I didn't see immediate results, but I, uh, you know, I moved on with my day. And I saw him again this morning, uh, which is, I don't know, five days later. First thing I asked him, I go, what happened to that cold? He goes, huh. He goes, later, this, later that afternoon, it dried up and went away, and I haven't seen it since. And he said that he was just thanking God. Now, that's because of commanding healing. I didn't pray for healing. I never said, Heavenly Father, I ask that you take this cold from him. You know, I said, be healed in the name of Jesus, the same that the apostles did. And you know what that led to? That led to him being convinced that there's power in the name of Jesus. He saw with his own, within his own body that the, the power of Jesus healed him. So I said to him, Well, you know that Jesus is real now. You want to accept him as your Lord and Savior? And right there, on the spot, at work, in the middle of Atlanta, I led him in a sinner's prayer. And I believe that brother is saved right now, and he will be in heaven with the rest of us. So I praise Jesus because he's using this to uh, not only reveal to me that same power, but to reveal to you that if you step out in faith, if you go out on that limb, because what you're doing is you're saying that, okay, I'm trusting you, Jesus, that when I do this, you're going to act. You're exercising your faith. You're, you're stepping out of the boat like Peter did, and you're walking on the water. And if you sit there and you second-guess it and say, Oh, well, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, then nothing's going to happen because you don't have the faith of a mustard seed as a mustard seed. So this is a powerful witnessing tool. If you're one of the people that uh, Proverbs 11.30 is talking about, it says, He who wins souls is wise. If that's you and you want to... Um, get a lot more power in your witnessing if you want to reach out to people. Next time you're witnessing to somebody, ask them if there's something in their body that they need healing for. You know, it could be a, uh, you know, like a sore shoulder, a sore back. Uh, I hear that, uh, you know, according to these two guys that I'm going to give you links to, they say that those things heal easily. Now, other things like, say, you know, cancer or like a serious disease, they can't be healed this way. 
but um, it, it takes persistence. You know, you don't just do it one time and give up. Um, you know, even if it's uh, sight or deafness, you know, if you pray one time for somebody and they receive partial sight, there's an example of that in Scripture. Uh, you know, the person went back, I think it was Jesus, went back and prayed again for them, uh, and then that person received full healing. So, you know, sometimes it comes in small stages, but you have to be persistent. So if you want to rack up treasure in heaven, you want to see miracles uh, <laughs> right in front of you, uh, this is what you got to do. you got to get out there and command healing. Um, check the links below. There's going to be links for Carl Henderson, who's a uh, missionary in the Philippines, and uh, William Lau, who teaches the Elijah Challenge. Uh, a quick rundown of the Elijah Challenge. You know, he goes into, uh, you know, say like a Filipino town or something, and he'll call out the uh, the witch doctors or the you know whoever the whoever the local you know religion is. He'll call them out and he'll say the same way that Elijah did. He'll say, "All right, if uh, I want you to pray for this person or do whatever you do, and uh, you know try to bring healing to this person, and then we'll try it my way and we'll uh, you know command healing in Jesus' name and we'll see whose God is the real deal." Uh, you know, I know Elijah was, uh, you know, seeing whose God was a real deal by, uh, you know, uh, he set up a bunch of wood covered with water to see whose God would light it on fire. And, you know, after the uh, the false priests, um, you know, did all their things and nothing happened, Elijah called on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our God brought down fire upon that wood that was drenched in water and it burned up all the wood, licked up all the water, and uh, by that display, many, many, many people were convinced of who the real God is. So this is a tool to reach unbelievers, to show unbelievers the uh, power of Jesus Christ, and to bring them in to the kingdom of God.